Hello Mouses! It's been a couple of days because I end up getting quite ill after I said, Oh, it's good to be back. I should never really say that because it always triggers something bad happening. But I am feeling a bit better, so I'm going to see whether I can get on with this. So, what have we had to happen in the news? Well, the first thing I want to talk about is this horrific news that uh, armed robbers tried to rob someone's house. In fact, did rob someone's house while they were streaming their webcam on Vine because they were playing Dota 2. I, I have no idea how to pronounce that. It's not a game that I really actually play. I've seen it, I've heard of it, don't actually play it. But it was very popular and lots of people were watching. So, one of the armed robbers has actually been caught. The other one is on the run, but they're going to find him because they've got the other guy. So, it's going to happen. Now, I wasn't watching this at the time, but I've seen it in the news afterward, and it is shocking footage. I'm not going to copy it here because that would be copyright violation, but a few news places do have it, so I've put links in the description bar below, and you can see it there. Now, moving on, I want to talk about the other main thing, apart from the fact that Al-Qaeda are, are attacking in um, Iraq. This is horrific news. I really, really don't like what we're seeing here, but this is what happens when you're forced out of a country before you can finish building up the military. The insurgents are going to take over again. Unfortunately, this was going to happen. I don't like it. I hope that it's all sorted out soon, but we had the problem of a lot of people saying, we have to leave now, we have to leave now, we have to leave now making it such a big political deal to stay and help build up the military for the force in a country that we had already destroyed. We purposely destroyed the military so we could take over. So we've got to put it back together and we didn't. So of course this is going to happen. There was a problem that was waiting to happen and unfortunately it's cost an awful lot of lives. People are being beheaded and there's, and there's nothing we can do about it. So I feel really, really bad and I hope that the situation is resolved as well as it can be as soon as possible. I know that it's going to be a massive problem but I hope for the best. And finally what I want to talk about is the passport office. It's a massive backlog. It's always a massive backlog in summer because people don't apply for passports early enough and then they all swarm in when they're about to go on holiday and they oh we need a passport. Check beforehand. The best time to get your passport for the summer is not in the summer. It's the winter. Get it in there when the backlog isn't there. And that way, when there's an inevitable delay, and there's an ice cream van outside. I am so wanting ice cream right now, but I can't because I'm on a diet. So that's annoying to me. But get it in in the winter, and then when the summer comes around, you're going on a holiday, you've already got your passport. It's one less worry for you when you're about to go away. But here's the other thing. The passport form is not hard, but every time, and I worked for the passport office for years, every time you would come to these applications and someone would have misspelled their name so their documentation doesn't match their birth certificate. Check how you spell it. Just copy it off your birth certificate. It's there written. That's fine. And all other things, like they would put the wrong dates on things, they would forget to send in documentation. Read the instructions, read the form, fill it out properly. If you're having trouble, there is a system where people will go and check it for you. Just go to the counter at a passport office. If you're near a passport office, go to the counter and have it checked. If you're not, then it costs about nine quid extra, but it's worth it. Go to the post office and they will check it over for you. Make sure you've got all your documentation. And that's it, that, that makes it faster, it makes it much, much better for you. So do that. It's fine to ask for help. Or read through the instructions, follow the instructions to the letter and you will get your passport fine. Another thing, remember, if you've never had a passport before, you're going to need your passport photos countersigned. That means someone that's in good standing in the neighborhood, in the community, has to tell the passport office that you are who you say you are. The reason is that your birth certificate and other identifying documents don't have your picture on. Of course they don't. I mean, how would a birth certificate from when you were just born have a picture of you when you're only like 50 year old on it? It wouldn't. Get your countersigned document signed by someone who's known you the relevant amount of time. It used to be two years, it might be more now. So that could be your boss, it could be your lawyer, it could be anyone in good standing in the community who's known you long enough. There's got to be someone that you know in your community, or if you just moved and no one in your community there. Someone that knows you for a long time from where you used to live. A teacher, for example, a, a university professor, your tutor at university. Someone will know you for the right amount of time. Get them to sign the photographs and then you're fine. Don't get your travel agent to sign it for you because they've realised that you don't have a passport and you need to fill a form in. The amount of times I've seen that, it's not allowed, don't do it. The travel agent doesn't know you from the next person that comes in. Don't get them to sign it. And then send all of the relevant documentation. It stops you having to get letters from the passport office that say, right, we need this, we need that, we need the other. Because they might forget that we need something. Just get it all sorted, send it in. 
the instructions are there to tell you what you need. And that's all there is to it. It's fairly straightforward and you'll get your passport back in a reasonable amount of time. It only takes about four minutes to deal with a passport application, so you could get it back fairly quickly as long as you've followed all the procedures and you put it in before the backlog comes in. Anyway, that's all I've got time for today, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you did like this. And if you did, remember to click the like button, share it with your friends so that they know what's been going on in the world as well, and do subscribe for future videos because there will be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson, you've been watching The Knobman Show, and I'll see you tomorrow.